This is the prerequisite review for section 4.5, exponential and logarithmic equations and applications. We have five objectives on this worksheet. Let's jump right in with objective one, and we will be simplifying, excuse me, solving each equation. Now, as you can see, we can go ahead and distribute this six Then <clears throat> we can combine like terms then we can subtract 2 and finally divide both sides by 18 and we end up with x is equal to negative 6 18 which is a one-third. Okay, so make sure we distribute those numbers in front of these parentheses uh, before we combine like terms. We, here we have 20 plus 5p equals 9p minus 3 minus 9 we can go ahead and combine like terms. And now we could subtract 20. And here we can go ahead and subtract 9p. And we have a negative, whoops, a negative 4p equals negative 32. And dividing both sides by a negative 4, we have p equals a positive 8. Okay. Now, there we used multiple steps. Our steps were distributing, distributing and combining like terms. Here, in this next section, we are going to factor. And that's how we are going to a solve. That's because we will now have squared terms. So our goal is to have factors on the left hand side and zero on the right hand side. That's our goal. Okay. So as you can see here, when we begin, we might want to go ahead and just divide, whoops, both sides by 2. And we get rid of that common factor, and we don't have to deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and write this and not distribute that c yet. And here we have c squared minus 8c equals negative 15. Here we're going to add 15 to both sides, and we finally have it c squared minus 8c plus 15 equals 0. So now, as you can see, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together, and they equal, and we'll make our little x, multiply together, and we want 15, and then added together, we would have a negative 8. And yes, that would be a negative 3 and a negative 5. And we will put that C underneath those and see that we now have C minus 3 multiplied by C minus 5 equals 0. So either c minus 3 equals 0 or c minus 5 equals 0. 
and we come up with c equal to 3 and c equal to 5. Let's do the same thing here on number 4. As you can see, we can divide both sides by 3. And now we have q times q minus 3 equals 4. We will go ahead and distribute that q. And now, as you can see, we can subtract 4 from both sides. And we end up with q squared minus 3q minus 4 equals 0. So now we're looking for two numbers. When we multiply them together, we have a negative 4. And when we add them together, we have a negative 3. So here you can see that that would be a negative 4 and a positive 1. We'll divide both of those by q. And we have q minus 4 multiplied by q plus 1. And either q minus 4 equals 0 or q plus 1 equals 0. And we have q equals 4 and q equals negative 1. Okay, looking at number 5, we have quite a bit of work to do. Let's begin by distributing that x. Our goal is to have 0 on the right-hand side. But as you can see, I can subtract 2x squared from both sides. So this makes it really nice. We end up with 5x minus 1 equals 3x plus 2. Let's go ahead and add 1 to both sides. And we end up with 5x equals 3x plus 3. Now we can subtract 3x from both sides. And we have 2x is equal to 3. We are almost there, dividing both sides by 3. Excuse me, dividing both sides by 2. We end up with x is equal to 3 halves. So we didn't need to factor. Uh, we did remove that squared term. OK, that was objective 2. Moving on to objective 3, we are going to be using the quadratic formula. And this quadratic formula solves 4x ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Keep in mind, we need 0 on the right-hand side or the left-hand side in order to use the quadratic formula. And that quadratic formula is x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Let me move that need out of the way because it really crowded that. And I just want to make sure, how about I use a highlighter that we know we need a 0 there on that uh, other side of the equal sign. So let's go ahead and use this. As you can see, we already have 0 on our right-hand side. So let's write a is 1, b is a positive 11, c is a negative 12. We have x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared. So b squared is 11 squared which is 121, and then 
what we can do is m subtract 4 times a times c. And a times c is a negative 12. That way we keep it really nice here and clean under our square root. And the division, the denominator is 2a, and 2a is 2 times 1, and that's equal to 2. And I think this is one of the things that helps students is to keep this nice and clean. So let's simplify that. That's negative 11 plus or minus. And if you want to take a moment and do that in your calculator, we have 128 minus 4 times a negative 12. So that would be plus 4 times 12. And we will have the square root of 176. Let's see if I can draw this a little bit nicer. All over 2. And actually, I think this is 121 plus 48, which would be 169. And so as you can see, we get negative 11 plus or minus 13 over 2. Square root of 169 is, is 13. So let's see if I can make this just a tad bit smaller so I can bring this up. So what does this mean? What this means is we have x equals negative 11 plus 13 and we have x equals negative 11 minus 13. So we have our answers are going to be, and this is over 2, so better not put that equals. So this is divided by 2, and that would be 2 over 2, which is 1. And that's a negative 26 over 2, 24. So that would be a negative 12. So you could actually write your solution set as 1 and negative 12 if you'd like. Okay, so the quadratic formula does take some time. Let's go ahead and look at number 7. See if I can move this over to about like that. So what we have to do here is subtract 6k from both sides. We need that right-hand side to have all of our terms so that we can set that right-hand side equal to 0. Here we have a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 4. And we have x is the opposite of b, which would make it a positive, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is a positive 36, minus 4. And a times c is 4, all over 2a, which is just 2. So we have 6 plus or minus the square root of 20 all over 2. So now, thinking about 20, let's talk about the square root of 20 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, which is 2 root 5. So we actually have 6 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2. Now we are getting there. We haven't left ourselves much room. Let me move this over there. And now we can share that denominator. So we have 6 plus or minus, let's put 6 over 2, and then let's put 2 root 5 over 2, and we have 3 plus or minus root 5. Okay, 